Hey son. Yeah, this is a cool car. What the f There's something wrong with it. You know, it's a 2018 Honda Accord, and if I lay down on the ground, like this here, and I go, holy sh we need to do something with this, don't we, Cody? God damn right, it's got to be lowered to the ground. What the hell? Somebody needs to put some bags on this car, right? Yeah, I agree. It's a nice car, but holy crap, what the hell, huh? Damn, is there a lift kit on this fucking car? Hey babe, can you un this thing? Please more low. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Uh, welcome to episode one. We're uh, we're bagging this bitch today, and just want to kind of recap over uh, you know what's been done, so you can kind of see. So I apologize for the bad lighting, but as you can see, quite a bit of work has already been done, uh, system wise, um, and as well as the airbag management has been mounted here, as you can see. Uh, we've got a couple of filters. I have filters before the uh, air tanks, which are, let's see if you can, not my mug. There you go. So we've got the air tanks mounted up here on the rear deck. Um, we've got two filters down below here. Let me get to those. Uh, filter one, filter two here before the tanks. Now these are steel tanks. That's why I'm uh, kind of going a little bit ham with the uh, the filtration and stuff. But then we've got another one that's going to come after that goes into the manifold. So let's see if I can figure this gimbal out here so you guys can see me. So yeah, so some work has been done. Um, but today I decided, uh, you know, I need some help. And well, my mama is going to help me. Except for the fact that... Uh, this turned into more of a family project. Now, the original idea was uh, I was going to have my mom do it because, I mean, what a great idea, right? Um, my mom bags my car. Who would have thought? You know, who would have thunk it? Um, it's unheard of, I'm sure. Uh, I think most uh, uh, most peeps moms wouldn't be like, hey, let me bag your car, you know? And uh, my mom was really excited about it, actually. And... Um, Although some of that might not come through in the video, uh, she was, and I thought it was a great idea, but, uh, it evolved into, you know, my dad wanted to be part of the project as well. And myself, obviously, I mean, it's my car and, um, so that's what we did. And I'm really glad we did it that way. But just to con confirm, you know, that it, it I'm going to leave everything in the video. Um, all the bloopers, all the, uh, the, the, the mess ups and stuff. We're not editing hardly anything out. Um, we're just going to keep it real. We're going to keep it a hundred and you guys are going to see everything. So, um, you know, that's that, but it had to be said, it's, it's not just a solo project. Uh, I think my mom says that a couple times in here, but that was the understanding originally. Um, that's not what it turned into, but, uh, on to the next clip. Back again for just a minute. I want to kind of talk about a little bit more of the stuff that we're going to be doing today. Um, we got some really cool spiky lug nuts we're gonna do, just cause I think they're cool. We got some 25 mil spacers we're gonna be putting on. Um, some of the various tools that you're gonna need. Uh, shout out to uh, Just a Honda Accord. I watched that video and did some research. And uh, I, I like his style. He uh, points out a lot of the tools you might need for any certain job. So uh, good on him, um, good looking out. Anyway, 
These long flex head ratchets are gonna come in handy for the camber kits because you'll see um, later in the video, they're, quite <laughs> they're way up in there, so you kind of need those. Got a couple of torque wrenches here. Of course, we got the uh, front and rear kit for the bags. Various parts, extra line, another filter, and some bolts and nuts and stuff like that in that box there. We've got the camber kits here. Um, you do need uh, various other tools. I brought all kinds of extensions and stuff like that and a, uh, an open head ratchet so we can uh, <clears throat> use these um, Allen wrenches for the uh, rear shock so we can uh, reuse the uh, factory uh, top hats if we need to. Got some grommets here so if, we, uh, if and when we do drill uh, a hole for the, uh, the airlines in the front suspension. Um, we'll have some nice grommets to cover the metal um, along with some silicone to kind of seal, seal that up. And then um, maybe that or just use some bulkheads. I haven't decided yet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just uh, what we've been doing. And then the, you'll probably notice the Eastwood box here. We've got a fender roller. We're not going to be using that today, I don't think, because I don't think we'll need to for the 50 offset stock wheels. So uh, we'll wait till we get the exotic three-piece Japanese shits, you know what I mean? But uh, until then, um, <clears throat> I'll talk to you later, and you're probably going to see my mom and the rest of this. So, yeah, happy viewing. Hey, guys, I'm getting ready to uh, uh, install the front kit. And the first thing you want to do is remove your top mount strut bolts. Your sway bar end link bolt. And your pinch bolt. So um, this is my first time bagging a car, so uh, obviously this is a pretty important project. I'm going to follow the directions, and hopefully that way you know you can do it too. Um, so the first thing we want to do is um, unbolt the sway bar uh, end link from the strut body. So we'll do that. One thing to note, guys, you'll notice that uh, I'm using a open end ratchet, so it's it's hollow. You can uh, stick tools through it, basically, right? And that's I'm doing that on purpose because um, there's an Allen key. And, well, excuse me, I should say my mom is using that on purpose uh, because there's an Allen key right on the uh, center portion of that because it's a ball joint. And and for those who don't know, um, sometimes those things can uh, just literally spin. Um, you could be trying to um, uh, undo them, right, uh, and and, uh, and be doing everything right, you know, but the, the thing will sit there and spin, so it's not really uh, loosening uh, so that you can remove it. So there's an Allen key right in the center of that to kind of prevent that from happening. You can stop that um, bolt from spinning while you're trying to get the nut off, and that's why we're using that tool. Just... Just an FYI, if you run into trouble, that's what that's for. What are you doing now, Mom? I'm just putting the bolt back on. That way we don't lose it later, huh? That's right. <laughs> All right, so uh, following the directions here, remove the strut lower mount pinch bolt, slide the steering knuckle down. Before you install these, you're going to want to adjust your camber, so because um, you're not going to have room to do it afterwards. I've got these set at negative two right now, um, but we'll need an alignment anyway. So Again, not exactly true. Uh, I'll explain later in the video how I did adjust the camber for the front end. Um, it's totally, uh, entirely possible to do that while it's still um, mostly attached to the vehicle. Um, so you'll see that later in the video. This is not covered in um, the instruction manual, but I did have to remove um, the brake line mounting bracket in order to gain access uh, to the pinch bolt. By the way, guys, uh, removing this uh, 
brake line bracket. Um, you'll need a 12 millimeter socket. And for the pinch bolt, a 17. Except that's not really true either. You can remove the uh, pinch bolt without uh, removing that little brake line bracket. Uh, with the tools that we were using though, I had a really shallow ratchet and I think we were using and uh, it just made it easier for us. Uh, just note that it's not necessary. You don't have to, but if you want to, it's no biggie. I think it's a 12 millimeter and you're basically done. Um, so that's what we did. All right guys, so check it out. Step three, remove strut lower mount, pinch bolt, and slide the steering knuckle down. Okay, full disclosure, check it out. Um, I bent the dust cover a little bit, but I got it done. So ladies, if you're thinking about bagging your car, start working with the weights now. Step four, remove the upper mount nuts and remove the strut from the vehicle. That's what we're doing now. Yeah. That's tightening. Oh. Go, mama. All right, so step four, remove the upper mount nuts and remove the strut from the vehicle. Did that, and um, I just wanna say, you know, make sure that your strut is um, free before you remove your upper bolts um, because it'll make your job a lot easier. All right, we're installing the kit components. It says begin by installing the airline into the air spring. Tighten the appropriate fitting to the airline one and three quarters turns beyond the hand, beyond hand tight, and then tighten the airline into the air spring one and three quarter turns beyond hand tight. I've got a 15 millimeter wrench. Now guys, uh, you might be watching this and, and some of you might be uh, watching in horror because you're like, whoa, what are you doing with the wrench already? Relax guys. I was right there. I told I told my mom I'm like, hey, you gotta you gotta thread this in by hand at first because you gotta know that you're not cross threaded, right? You gotta make sure that you're not cross threading it. You know, if you just start going ham with the wrench automatically, I mean, disaster can strike, right? So I I, uh, I put the pause on that off camera and uh, we 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 threaded it in by hand and then and only then we tightened it by by the wrench, uh, what, one and three quarter turns, I think is what it said, pass tight, pass, you know, hand tight or whatever. So just know that that's what really went on there, not, we didn't just go ham with the wrench, and uh, yeah. Our airline is in, tightened, so we're going to insert the upper strut mount into the chassis and align locating tab. That's uh, your little tab that's gonna go right over here. Okay, airline is on. Next step, we're gonna insert the upper strut mount into the chassis and align the locating tab. Well, there is no locating tab on this, so, but no biggie. I think uh, it's pretty hard to mess this up, so. Um, install the upper mount nuts um, and torque the nuts to 59 or 45 um, pounds a foot. So, we'll get on that. All right, I've installed the uh, upper mount nuts and set my torque to 44 pounds. So let's get this last one in there. There we go. And that's it. What did we do? <laughs> oh. All right, I installed the pinch bolt and uh, the torque on that was 61 pounds. So we're going to the next step. We're gonna reinstall the sway bar end link and torque the nut to 47 pounds. Okay, so much as I hate to admit it, I ran into a problem on the driver's side and had to call in the big guns my son for help and i'm gonna turn this over to him now to explain to you what we ran into um and what we did to get through it so hopefully that doesn't happen to you good morning 
Um, it's day two. I like my nice, stylish, safety orange vest. Safety, guys, safety, it's important. Um, if I can figure out this gimbal again, it likes to have a mind of its own. Um, so yeah, as my mom was explaining, um, we had a bit of an issue with, if I can get over here and show you, with the driver's side axle. Now they look the same length. You'll notice we have the spring compressor on there. Notice all the marks here. We, uh, we had, we had a hell of a time. A hell of a time with it and uh i don't know this isn't my first rodeo i've done this before um full disclosure but uh it should have been easy and if you ask anybody hey coil over install you know airbag install all that should be easy but it, i mean a scale of one to ten i'd probably rate it you know maybe a five but yesterday was uh yeah that was fun we fought with the thing for three four hours probably um off and on um and uh it just we couldn't get the steering knuckle off. It was just, uh, it was a bitch. Um, but these things happen. So, you know, we're just keeping it real. We're just letting you know, you know, it, it didn't go as easy as we thought it was going to go, um, as smooth as we thought it was going to be. But, um, you know, we got to keep trucking. We're going to, we're going to keep, keep going. We got a lot of work done yesterday, despite that, uh, the whole front end's all ready to go. <clears throat> got the uh, airlines run we're actually going to show you those um what, what we did because i i find I, I looked at a lot of videos online and other people doing this and nobody talks about that um like like zero zero percent of, of of the people filming out there never talk about where they put their lines um we ran them inside the car um we actually just drilled a, a hole through the firewall um, because I've got a lot of other stuff going on in this car, as, as you, you've probably seen if you've been watching this video. Um, so we had to make a spot for it, and we did. And uh, I'll show you that in the next clip. Um, and then we'll keep you updated on the rest, and Mom will take it away from there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so this is one of the worst ones I've ever seen, and I don't know why. It was just, it was something else. I, we used a pry bar, my dad was jumping up and down on thing just to get it to work i mean it just we did what we did so do what we had to do we're gonna do it we're gonna make it work. all right guys see you later all right so i don't know what y'all do with your families but this is how we spend quality family time we are um i think um able to see uh the light at the end of the tunnel here so i'm gonna turn it over to spiky lee here to um fill you in on where we're at Good morning. Uh, just trying, gonna go over a little bit of what we did. Now, in a couple of the last videos, you might recall that I said that we had a problem with this um, this driver's side uh, strut coming out, and I think what that is is uh, a, a result of uh, our ignorance. <laughs> um, I've done this before, but I got to tell you that was a that was a notch for us to to really complete, and the reason for it was. Uh, the, uh, the airlift struts, um, when, when they're shipped, they're, they're, they're set up for maximum low as, as they put it, I think, um, the maximum lowered height that you can get. So no need to adjust them if that's what you're going for. And I was like, all right, cool score. Well, the thing is the pinch bolt for the, uh, that's this guy here. I don't know if you can see it in this low light, but the pinch bolt, um, on the other side, I had it all buttoned up, right? So this side was still factory. And the length of those is so, there's so much of a difference in the way they're adjusted that I had uh, no idea what a time I was going to have fighting the uh, factory sway bar. Uh, and th that's what I think really got in our way. We weren't really paying attention to that. Um, at the time, we were trying to get the steering knuckle off of the bottom of the, the uh, factory strut. And as a result, I mean, we were using like a three and a half foot uh, pry bar in between the, uh, like the metal frame part here and the rotor. And you can see the dust the dust cover here is uh, all bent up as a result. And literally, my dad was jumping up and down on it just so we could get it to clear to get out of there. And we are, we had a spring compressor on it. I went and got a ball joint separator to separate the uh, end link for the uh, the sway bar, which I also bent a little bit, uh, trying to straighten out the strut and make it uh, play nice. And it, none of that really, 
really worked. Really jumping up and down on the pry bar is what, how we got it out with a spring compressor, which is ridiculous. It shouldn't be that hard. And if we would have just thought about it, I, 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 if I were to do it again, I would suggest if you're going to do this, uh, remove both factory struts at the same time and kind of do this at the same time. Um, you know, put the, uh, put the new ones in at the same time too. It'll make your life a lot easier. Um, and you won't be fighting the sway bar, which is a lot harder than, uh, originally thought anyway uh so to continue with our update though we did run the lines um and i just used uh the leader line i went right through this little grommet uh for the factory brakes uh it worked fine what i did was i pulled out the grommet to make it pliable so we could stretch it over the leader line and then we just kind of tucked it back in there and then from there let me see if i can get this gimbal to work for us then from there we kind of ran it Underneath, I have some uh, aftermarket stereo equipment, so um, we ran it underneath that factory or the uh, the aught gauge power wire, all the way to the other side, and then what we did, my buddy who helped me install the stereo, he uh, he made uh, a substantial hole down here in the firewall, down by the. Uh, down by the uh, passenger foot, foot well. And so we just used that because he made it generously big. It was like big enough that we could uh, fit two little lines in there. You know what I'm saying? So then after that, you know, you got to seal that hole up. So let's see if I can get you in here. So down here, yeah, this thing's not going to play nice. Let me see. Adjust you a little bit. So down here, I don't know if you can see that, but I really gooped it up in there. Hang on a second. Now we're all screwy. Okay. So we uh, we gooped it up in there. I used some black silicone to seal it up. Um, real good. And then from there, what we did was... Uh, let me turn you around again one more time. I just want to interrupt myself one more time here. Uh, well... Probably not the last time, but uh, interrupt myself real quick and uh, say that I didn't need the ball joint separator at all. All I had to do was equalize the, uh, I had to jack up the other side and equalize the uh, pressure on the uh, anti-sway bar. And then it kind of like straightened that out because it, it was at like an extreme angle because, you know, when I took the bolt out, everything just kind of went chink, you know, and it was it was under a lot of pressure and it was actually kind of how I messed up the threads. Uh, trying to get it out. And um, anyway, once I jacked up the, the other side to equalize and, and be on the same level as the other side, if that makes any sense, you, you know, jack up the whole hub assembly. Um, then it equalized and I was able to take it out by hand easily and uh, hopefully you're enjoying uh, watching me uh, learn the, the gimbal and um, getting flipped upside down at this point. <laughs> As I said, we're not going to edit the, this stuff out. We're just going to keep all the bloopers and crap in there because uh, I don't know, I think it makes for a better show. Um, albeit a, a bit uh, long winded. Um, I think we're almost at an hour of footage now. Yikes. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this though. Anyway, back to the clip. And then from there, we just ran, uh, the lines down this side underneath the carpet and zip tied to the lines that were already there. The, um, I had some power wire and some RCAs and stuff ran through there for the stereo. So we did that. Um, Ran it all the way to the back. And then uh, I kind of ran it alongside my uh, my amp rack here. And then I'm just going to route it to the, uh, to the manifold. So that's kind of what we've been doing, what we've been working on. We also... Uh, this thing's wild. Uh, still learning our gimbal, obviously. So right here... Um, we're, uh, we're test fitting some 25 mil uh, spacers as well. 25 mil, I hear, is the magic number to clear these factory uh, studs, and it seems to be uh, the magic. It's, it seems like it's going to work really well. Um, 
except the fact that uh, I think that the factory wheel was still making contact with the uh, uh, stock studs, um, just barely in, in, in the front. Um, and, and for that reason, initially, uh, it's been uh, about a week. I'm taking two weeks off on this project because uh, family has some business they got to take care of, and so do I. And so we're, we're going to revisit it here in a couple of weeks. But um, anyway, I took the spacers back off because they were still making contact with the, uh, the factory wheel, and I didn't anticipate that because I thought 25 mil was enough to clear them, but it just barely touches. And uh, I felt like I could feel a little bit of vibration just rolling down the block at low speed uh, as if it wasn't tight enough. And um, we did torque them to 80 foot pounds. Um, but that uh, I still felt just a little bit of a vibration and I, I thought I heard something. So I, I just to be safe, I'm gonna, I took them off and we're going to re revisit that and we're going to shave a, a few threads off the factory studs to make them work. But uh, yeah. And uh, as it turns out, I really liked the spiky love nuts. Um, I, I I like ratchet stuff like that, so uh, I am going to end up running those. But uh, initially, I'm I, I haven't. I'm just kind of rolling stock uh, right now, which is fine. It's fine. It's a little bit torturous because I want everything right now. But you know what? It is what it is. So we're going to try that. We're going to do some test fitting, and hopefully, I don't have to do any fender rolling just yet. Uh, that'll probably be in the future when I get my super exotic Japanese wheels or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and we're gonna maybe use those spiky lug nuts unless I, um, these ones over here, if I can get to it. These ones, but they're super long and cheesy and I don't know if I wanna run them, we'll see. Um, we got the, uh, got the bags put together, we're about to throw those in. This is the bottom actually, so it goes like this, if you didn't know. And then your air hose, your, uh, your fitting goes to the inside. So yeah, so that's what we're working on. We're just uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish up the bags, get those working, test it out, leak test it, all that stuff. I uh, still got to mount the uh, remaining water trap. Um, there's three of them in total because I'm ridiculous. This is how we roll. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of an update, and then uh, we'll, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, uh, so we're on the rear now. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the sway bar end link bolt. 12 millimeter socket. Mm. I'll be under the car. Okay, end leaf bolt is out. Step two uh, remove the lower control arm outer pivot bolt. Back under the car. So. Is it big one, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Pivot bolts out. Next, loosen the lower control arm inner pivot piv 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 bolt, but do not remove. So well, here we go. Okay, so uh, step five, lower the jack under the control arm to release the coil spring. Remove the coil spring from the vehicle. Safety first, so I'm not gonna be down there with my head or anything. Here we go. And there you have it. As I cut your face off in the shot. <laughs> Raise the control arm and reinstall the lower control arm outer pivot and sway bar end link bolts. Do not torque at this time. All right, step seven. Remove the lower shock mount bolt. It. All right, we're on step number eight. Remove the upper shock mount bolts and remove the shock from the vehicle. Here we go. 
Under the cup. Now for this step, guys, you're gonna need a really big extension, as you can see. see. Make light work of it. All right, so we're ready to start installing the air suspension. The first thing we need to do is remove the upper mount jounce jumper from the stock rear shock and separate it. And then we're going to put it on the new air shock. So, um, but first, adjust your hardness once it's up here at the top and you're gonna have a heck of a time if you don't do it first so here we go okay guys just an update we uh we got a lot of the steps done for the rear um running into another little problem um getting these uh here i'll show you if i can getting these top mounts off of the stock shocks if you look really closely there's a bit of what appears to be Loctite on there. So that's been real pleasant. And um, using the uh, the Allen key and um, and a ratchet isn't really doing much, even in a vise, and it's kind of screwing up the, um, the, Allen, the Allen key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my, my friend's shop and we're gonna um, see if we can impact it off. Um, we'll go from there, let you know how it goes. All right, okay, back for an update. Uh, just to let you guys know, we did actually handle the, uh, the, the uh, what would you call it, the uh, top rod nut for the, uh, the top mount of the shock right here. As you can see, they're mounted to the new shocks now. Um, we just used an impact and a vise and some vise grips on the, we actually just put the vise grips on the rod. Now, in hindsight, it's always 2020. I think if you, uh, if you would just uh, use a ratchet, and some vice grips, you could probably do it, which would be fine if you're planning on not using the old shocks again, uh, you know, putting them back on the car, which I don't plan on. Normally, I would never do that um, because you don't want to damage the rod or, you know, um, mess up your seals or whatever. So, but again, I'm not planning on putting them back on the car, so that's what we did. Um, so if you run into that problem where you got some Loctite or whatever on there, and they came off really easy with the impact. You probably could have done it with a wrench, but we used an impact and it made quick work of it. So job done on that. And we're going to finish the rest of the rear install. See you in a minute. All right. So um, Farnsworth here is going to be uh, installing uh, the rear bags and we're going to watch. That's right, Mama. We're going to do it right now. You want me to hold that light for you? Pops is his assistant. So basically, we got the airbag all put together. We got the uh, fitting and the uh, this lower cup put on. Now this fitting will lock the bag in place, and you'll see there's a little notch here. You line that up with the hole here in the uh, in the lower control arm. So it's just it it hooks up like a dream. Now they say to run the airline into this first to make your life easy. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I might. Um, we're just going to see how it goes. Um, we'll see how much clearance we have or whatever to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. All the way under here. Okay. Sorry. All good. Just plop right in there now. Want to hand me that and I'll uh, show them what I'm doing? Absolutely. Good idea. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get you guys under here. Yeah, so now you can see what I see. So, yeah, I just bolted it up down there. And it's really as simple as that. Now I gotta torque it. Give that back to your mama, and uh, we'll be set. What's the torque specs? We need to set that up. Uh, 
number five. Thirty pounds. Close the bolt to thirty pounds. You know what? I think you. Why is the it said it was supposed to be the inside of the car? I thought it said. Yeah, it did. Well, this is towards the outside. Well, it said. Inner. So I wonder if they're different sides. I the oh. cup there. Okay. Can you see that one? Yes. So we put the wrong one on. Okay. They are actually sides, so the notch will be on this side, on each side here, and the fittings go towards the inside of the car. Okay. So we have to undo this one. Good to know. Good thing we didn't torque it down, eh? I mean, it's easy enough, though. Infinitely easier than the fronts were. So I'm not bitching. I see why they say run the airline first. So let's go ahead and just cut a length of line and we'll... Uh, Okay. We'll install it first, like it says, to make our lives easy. Uh, I wonder if this is long enough. I don't think it is, because if you have to wrap it around. I want to be sure it's long enough. We're rolling. Rolling. Okay, so, guys, what, it, what we did was... Uh, we're, we're running the lines first, as it says in the instructions. So you're, you're going to want to plug this airline in before you mount the bag. Otherwise, it's just going to be kind of a botch, so we're not going to do that. We're going to follow the directions. Uh, but to do that, I had to uh, figure out how much line I had. So I just took the whole damn roll and plugged it into the manifold, ran it all the way through the trunk. And then there's a little boot here uh, right here where my finger is. And I just cut a little slit in there, and you want to be careful because obviously you've got some factory wires there you don't want to cut into. But you cut it into there, right? And then on the other side here, you remove this little mud flap. Here, it's two 10 millimeter bolts. And you just pull this out, and then you can fish that line through. And what, what you can see what I've done too, is I've gone along this whole... Uh, Firewall. Um, what, what, what would you call it? The, uh, the flocking for the inside of the wheel well. Um, and uh, so we made sure that it's up and out of the way from the suspension being able to pinch it. And basically we're gonna cut it to length, plug it in here and mount the bag and then we'll be, uh, we'll see you in the next video clip. Okay guys, just an update. We're, we got most of this stuff done, uh, ran. I put in my little drain valves. They're kind of ugly right now. I'm gonna paint that handle black. We did get the third uh, water trap put in. I don't know if you can see that in the video. We did not get them mounted because it looks I was gonna drill from the bottom of the car and uh, <clears throat> make my holes for the uh, the mounts um, but uh, it appears that the factory mufflers are massive and they're just kind of in the way and I think I'll save that for when I get an aftermarket exhaust maybe uh, to actually mount them I think they'll be fine just the way they are for right now we did go ahead and mount the spacers uh, and I went with the spiky lug nuts for right now I think I kind of like them we'll see um, we tested out the fitment at first. I okay, by test the fitment, what I mean is I put a jack underneath the tire while it was still in jack stands and jacked it up to find out where the stopping point was, where it was going to be bottomed out, right? Um, just to make sure that the fitment was okay and I didn't create some bad body work or some bacon fenders because uh, uh, that wasn't my goal and that's, that's, that's not what I like. So, um, you know, if that's your thing, hey, more power to you. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, what I found was they were, I, I liked where it's, uh, Airlift had it set from the factory. I think it uh, I think it does have the perfect amount of drop for maximum low or whatever. Um, I think it looks really good. Uh, it was very tight on the fender, so I dialed in a couple more degrees of negative camber up front. Uh, we ended up at negative three. I think that's about the max you can really get out of them anyway. 
um, for now, and that's what I have. I haven't rolled or pulled my fenders yet, so hmm, that's what it is what it is. But it's a good idea before you put some weight on the car and before you actually uh, do your calibration to figure out all these things so that you don't cause uh, damage to uh, your car. Had it at negative one degree camber uh, on the setting there on this little top plate. Um, that didn't work out. It was a little too tight on the fender for my taste, so I just I put a couple more degrees in there. So, so we're sitting at about negative three. Uh, degrees of camber and uh, torqued everything down <clears throat> Incidentally, if you do need to do that, you don't need to take the whole thing out uh, just to adjust the camber if you get one of those uh, uh, I don't know what kind of tip they call it, but it's a an allen that's got kind of a recess in it So you can kind of bend the allen, you know and have it at an angle and still use it So what I did was I just took the bolts off and I lowered it down just enough to where I had a, a, enough angle to I could get in there and you know, torqued them down after I uh, got the setting that I wanted. So you can still do that with this tiny little opening. And then I use this really cool tool. I, I don't know what you would call it. It's like a, it's almost like a pick or something. And I use this instead of the mounting tab that's supposed to be there according to the instructions. And I just used that and I kind of pried it ever so gently to where I had it perfectly centered where it would be if it had a mounting tab in it. Um, so that's kind of what it did, and uh, that's that's where we're at. We're just dialing in the, uh, uh, putting in the interior and the trim, stuff like that. And one other thing I wanted to show you, if you didn't know, how to take out the back seat, because this one had me stumped for a second, it was these stupid little clips right here. I was just like, I thought they were just traditional. You could just uh, pop them up like, like an older Honda, but no, they have these little slides. And so if you just slide that, you see this little action here, that little tab goes away. You can pop the seat right away, pop it right out. There's also a little 10 millimeter bolt, I think, that uh, attaches here. Uh, I omitted that. I, I, um, it's just not part of my system anymore. I, I, I took that out because I don't feel like I need that bolt there. Uh, anyway, that's up to you if you want to do that with your car or whatever. But uh, yeah, so um, that's it for now. Just wanted to give you an update, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, we're recording. We are about to fire the up. Hopefully everything works right, because if not, I'm going to pull my hair out and I don't have any hair. So... <laughs> Mom, Bye. you can take it away. I'm going to start this up and then we're going to do the calibration process. And uh, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. I think we worked hard and did a good job. Smurf. Oh, I'm excited. I think that we all did a good, great job. A little more work than I anticipated, but I'm very pleased with the final product. Can't wait for you to fire it up, calibrate everything, and let's see what this old girl can do. All right, so now I'm going to hand this over to Mama. We're going to see what happens. Uh, I'm nervous, but let's let's just see. We're, we're, we're good. I think we're good. We're good. We're good. Come here, Coach. Keys in the console, son. Got a little bit of glare here. I'm going to make sure you can see. Compressor kicked on. Woohoo! What a nice one. You gotta let it off the back. Okay. So it was at this point that uh, I realized that uh, we weren't building pressure like we should uh, in the air tanks. And, um, well, that just means that we have a leak and or leaks. So uh, 
uh, decided to abort mission on that one uh, on the first startup, obviously, because what's, what's the point of carrying on? You got to address these leaks. Um, um, and that's the whole point of this process. You know, you got to check everything out, make sure it's uh, it's good before you uh, make sure it's roadworthy before you get hit the road. Right. I mean, otherwise, you know, you don't want you don't want the consequences if you don't, you know, so um, stop that. And then um, I was also explaining to my parents, I know the audio is really quiet on the video that we need to let the thing off the jack stands and uh, let it do its thing. Um, initially, when you're done uh, doing your bag install, um, it has to do a calibration and you'll see that later in the video. Um, but I left the blocks there so it had room to do so. Um, probably wouldn't have mattered because I have stock body work. I, did, I, didn't, I don't have like a lip kit or ground effects of any kind really aftermarket. On my previous car I did and uh, I was running the same system, um, the, the Airlift uh, V2, which is discontinued by the way, uh, but it's, uh, I like it, it works for me, so I went with it again. Anyway, um, I digress. Uh, when it does the calibration, though, it could potentially damage your bodywork or whatever, but it hangs really low to the ground because um, it's going to go through all the height settings, you know. So if you let that thing just sit on the ground, which would be a neat trick when you don't already have air pressure in there, incidentally, because when you let it off the jack stands, everything's going to collapse and it's going to be fully pancaked, if you will, um, as soon as you do that. That's why I left it on the blocks, though, because I wanted to be able to get the jacks out from underneath. Uh, and just let it do its thing. Um, so that's what we did. We took the uh, jack stands out. We fixed all the leaks first. Uh, and then we, we took the jack stands out and, uh, and let it do its thing, which you'll see later in the video. Um, so that's the way I recommend doing it, just to make it kind of seamless. Once you let it do its calibration, you can air everything up, and then you can get those blocks out from underneath your car. And then, uh, as they say, you know. Um, so yeah, that's what we did. And... Uh, See you in the next clip. Good morning, people. So what we're doing today, we're just getting started here. This, this guy had a leak last time, so we put some new fittings on there. I didn't really like these cheap Chinese ones. They didn't seem to fit as well. So I went to a, a quality uh, spot. Uh... Thanks to my friend, he let me know where to get this stuff. And uh, anyway, got some quality fittings in there. We we taped them and we gooped them. Put some uh, put some thread sealing on there. Hopefully that won't be a leak this time. It was it was we were dealing with a leak there, and then also over here. If I can get this, here we go. Oh, so you don't have to go all the way. Papa Smurf is helping me out, and. We're trying to get way up in there. Can you see that? Yep, right there. That green little fitting there. Yep, that's what we did. Right there. We gooped that and we, uh, we, uh, what, we taped it so it, uh, so hopefully it won't leak. And that's what we're doing right now. See you in a minute. So we continued testing and, uh, it was at this point we, uh, we discovered we had, uh, a lot more leaks. And by a lot, I mean, we discovered like uh, five leaks to be exact um most of which were at the tank um to our credit uh we didn't do those we, we didn't hook those up initially uh that was my guy at the shop now uh i had him do some work for me because uh for a lot of reasons one i didn't want to mount the tanks um it's hard enough to, for me to, to be working on stuff, but like get my ass all folded up in that trunk. And I just, I didn't feel like doing it. Plus he had some work to do on the rear deck, uh, for me. And then also, um, he had done all the electronics. Now, mind you, I could have done the electronics. I could have, but I'm very methodical in the way I do things. And, uh, I like to have, uh, only one chef in the kitchen if you will right like so although i could have wired up the compressors myself i didn't i had him do it because he did all the other electronics for me uh the, the stereo system and stuff like that i can't take credit for that i mean he did a phenomenal job and i wanted him to do that uh for for a number of reasons one i didn't have the workspace to work on that at the time um i didn't have the time to do it 
And two, uh, or, or and three, I should say, uh, he's just a damn ninja at it. He's he's really good at what he does. Uh, but one of his specialties, uh, one of his non-specialties, I would say, is is bags. And he'll tell you himself, he's never done them before. And he's never worked with air fittings. And what I discovered was the, the, the fittings that he did hook up to the tanks and stuff, just they just didn't have enough tape on them. Now, some people will say, don't use tape. Use pipe sealant. You know, um, the pros, a lot of the pros will tell you that, you know, don't, don't use tape, you know, do it right. Use pipe sealant, whatever, whatever. I use both on, uh, a lot of the things that I did, but on some of them, I just use tape and it's working out fine. Now that said, um, I suspect I have two more leaks, um, cause they're the last two fittings that I didn't do that he did. <laughs> and I'm not talking smack about him. Again, this guy does really good work. It's just that he's never done bags, and he, he's not familiar. I mean, he knows the concept, um, but he just didn't put enough tape, is what I'm finding on most of these. Um, they were torqued well enough, just, just not enough take, uh, tape. And so right now I have a very small air leak at the uh, at the tank, and the, the reason I know that is because I can see it right on the display of the V2. It'll, it'll show me, uh, you know, when I started my car next, uh, you know, where all the pressures are at. None of the bags themselves are really losing any pressure. They, st I can leave it aired up all night, and it'll stay right there. And when I start it up the next day, it'll be right where it was, um, with the exception of the tank pressure. Now, the tank pressure will lose uh, roughly about 100 pounds. I got it uh, at the lowest setting right now, where it cuts off at 150, because that's really all I need. I don't feel like bring it up to 175 and I don't like making the compressors work that hard or, or run that long side note I got the uh I believe it's the 480c stealth edition or whatever like one of the biggest ones you can buy from uh, airlift and man these ones are noisy compared to uh, uh before I was running dual 444s just a side note now I don't know if it's because they're vibrating against the bottom of the trunk there or whatever because they're mounted underneath my amp rack but uh, that's another thing I need to address because that's super annoying to me. I, I don't want to ever really hear them, you know, <laughs> right? First world problems. But uh, yeah, they are. You'll see in the in the video later. They're they're noticeable. So where my 444s weren't, and they did. I I feel like they performed just about as well. I, I mean, I I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we were addressing more air leaks and then you'll see in the very next clip It'll jump over to me working on the front suspension again Just getting everything roadworthy and I needed to button that up because I had damaged the front uh, sway bar and link so uh, All right, that's it for now All right guys check it out um, What we're doing here replacing My little screw up here. So old uh, Sway bar and link new notice the bend that's because I was a dummy put a pry bar in between and thought I could just twist this while we're trying to get this thing out having so much fun um, don't do that guys don't don't be like me although if you do do it uh, a new sway bar end link is only 22 bucks and some change with tax but yeah don't do that also one thing to note from the factory uh, or so the parts guy tells me the bottom joint here has a locking nut where the top is supposed to be a non-locking nut now the interesting thing about mine is i've never had it apart and i truly believe this is a locking nut up here and it shouldn't have been um and one of the reasons why i, I suspect that we may have uh screwed up the threads on there as well because we were trying to reef it on there and it was bending my allen key a bit and uh so yeah I don't know why that was like that. Um, they are two different styles of bolts. He actually gave me a, hooked me up with a few of them. You can see one's shiny and one's dull. And uh, that's apparently what's supposed to go on there. So FYI, if you didn't know. Okay, um, this is it. So we uh, ran into quite a few leaks, um, got all that fixed, and we're getting ready to start her up and uh, calibrate system. So. Come along for the ride.
but that's funny. Okay, so then we go here. last 10 minutes proceed yes or no so this is where you want to get away from the car because it's going to start moving all right we'll just watch the show
What's it doing now? Oh, shoot. Look at that. Better stand back here and get it off. Check out these babies. My goodness. Yes. <laughs> better than you got. Still in there? I don't know. Yeah, those This jack needs more oil. Right? Yeah. So maybe that was right. I'll pick some up on my on my way home and then we'll uh, revisit it next weekend maybe. <laughs> Uh, now let's do the front. You want them on this side of the post or the other side? This side. This side. This side. Yeah, that side. Now there's nothing in the wine. Jack's going to do it. There you go. Okay. One more to go. Yep. Well, it got warm, didn't it? It's going to get a lot warmer. Oh, 
Papa Smurf there doing the jacking. Farnsworth doing the floor duty. Hey, hey. All right. Last jack coming down. There we go. Dropping her to the ground. Jeez, that is low. <laughs> <laughs> Try getting in and out of it now. That looks pretty cool, dude. Your, your tires look good, too. That's deflated all the way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, but I'm not going to drive like that, so we're good for now. <laughs> <laughs>